Next, we're going to look at the velocity in the kinetic model of an ideal gas. So again, we have a box. Tons of molecules move around the box. In the previous video, we discovered that the pressure in the box is going to be equal to the molar mass of the gas times the number of moles of gas in the box times the RMS velocity squared divided by three times the volume of the box. If we combine that with the equation PV equals nRT, can we find an equation that relates the velocity to some other variables? Let's find out. So we're going to move the V over here. That means that PV is going to be equal to one third MN times the velocity RMS squared. Again, RMS stands for root mean square, which is the effective velocity of the molecules in the gas. Since PV is equal to this and PV is also equal to this, that means those should be equal to each other. Therefore, we can say that one third MN VRMS squared is equal to nRT. Now, n and n here can cancel on both sides, so that means that the velocity is not dependent on the number of moles in the box. That's interesting. Um, then we can go ahead and multiply both sides by 3 and divide both sides by the molar mass. So we have v squared RMS is equal to a 3RT divided by the molar mass. And finally, if I take the square root of both sides, and that's why it becomes the root mean square velocity. Root mean square velocity is therefore equal to the square root of 3RT over M. Now this is very interesting. This means that the velocity of the molecules in the gas are only dependent on two things. The temperature in the gas and the molar mass of the gas, so the mass of the molecules themselves. Now if we remember that K is equal to R divided by Avogadro's number, we can substitute that in for, uh, we can then replace R by K times N sub A, so R can be written as K times N sub A. So if we do that, we get as equal to the square root of 3 times K times Avogadro's number times the temperature divided by the molar mass. And then if we move the Avogadro's number down here, we can say, well, this is equal to the square root of 3 times K T divided by the molar mass divided by Avogadro's number. And of course, the molar mass divided by Avogadro's number is the mass of a single molecule. So this equation can also be written in terms of a mass of a single molecule. And so we have 3kT over m. So we write VRMS can be written as the square root of 3RT over the molar mass. Or we could say that VRMS is equal to the square root of 3k over the mass of a single molecule, where k, of course, is the gas constant divided by Avogadro's number. And that is how we determine the velocity of a molecule in a gas. Now, that doesn't mean that the all the molecules have the exact same velocity as that particular number, because there's molecules that move a lot faster, molecules that move a lot slower. It turns out that the velocity kind of has a distribution that kind of looks like this. Um, like so. It's kind of a squished uh, normal distribution like that. And the RMS velocity is somewhere around here, which means VRMS is a representative velocity of the gas molecules, but realizing that some move faster and some move slower. But at least that gives you a pretty good idea. Notice that we derived that from the pressure of a gas, and we can also determine now the velocity of a gas, which is simply a function of the temperature, really, and the mass of the molecules.